A woman witnesses a girl's initiation into voodoo. Her eyes are in the back of her head. She's totally and completely possessed by some entity. And it scares her out of her wits. And she started like floating around the room. I was in shock. Find out how her encounter with the occult led to an encounter with God. Plus, CBN is on the ground in Kenya. Why one village shares their drinking source with the lions. All that and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. A recent study revealed that 40 million Americans regularly view pornography, spending nearly $10 billion a year online. Well, not surprisingly, those statistics have been linked to an increase in sex trafficking. Recently, evangelist Christine Kane says she knows how to put an end to sex trafficking. While speaking at a worship conference in Los Angeles, Kane said, I'll tell you how to stop human trafficking, sex trafficking overnight. If people stop watching porn, just stop it. She goes on to say, here I am trying to put traffickers in jail and you're watching Game of Thrones. Of course, referring to the HBO show, which recently drew nearly 35 million viewers worldwide. The show unapologetically featured graphic nudity, sex, and violence. So what do you think here? Is, is Christine on to something here? Well, I, I think Christine's definitely on to something. And sadly, you know, the thing about the, the whole issue with porn is it's so not just so accessible, it's accessible privately so people can participate, engage, whatever you want to call it, in watching this junk. And, and think they get away with it. Yeah, and exactly. There are no repercussions. You don't have to go to the bad part of town and go to the bookstore anymore. Uh, the, it, it can happen right on your tablet or on But it your mars phone. your soul, you know, and so in the end, you think you get away with it, but, but you really don't. you don't get away with and it. And medical science is now backing this up, uh, that they're linking viewing images, pornographic images, uh, that it releases chemicals in your brain that are functionally equivalent to the same chemicals that when you take cocaine. So this stuff is addictive. Yeah. And in that addiction, it actually changes your behavior. And what are you looking for now in relationships? Uh, are you looking for meaningful relationships or are you looking for what you just saw? And if you're looking for what you just saw, you've just damaged yourself. Uh, you're damaged the long-term relationships that you have in your life. You damage your family. Uh, and that goes generationally. So please, if you're involved in this, realize it's addicting and you can get free. If you know someone who you know is, if you uh, uh, particularly, are struggling with sexual sin, our friends at Faithwire have created a seven-week video-based series called Set Free. It's designed to equip you with the practical and spiritual tools you need to stop watching pornography. Take a look. Well, if you want more information, all you have to do is uh, visit setfreecourse.com and you too can be set free from this. Realize it is addicting. Uh, and the, the first step is to recognize this is a problem for me. I need to get free. Well, four-time All-Star Rajon Rondo is an NBA passing leader. And last week, the Laker guard gave an assist off the court by donating $20,000 and a large number of books to a middle school in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. The book bungalow was created in hopes of giving students a safe place to relax and be inspired. 
Rondo is known for his generosity. Last year, he took for, uh, for more than 300 Louisville students to a screening of Black Panther, and then later in the fall, paid for blazers and ties for over 150 students with high academic achievements. During the event last week, Rondo said, I think God put me here to be in a position to give back. Certain people make it for certain reasons, but I think my calling is to be able to touch as many kids as possible, starting right here in Louisville, my hometown. Boy, I love that. Yeah, uh, yeah. he's giving back. He's saying, I'm, I'm going to reach back to my hometown and say, I want to make a difference, make a difference in children's lives. Absolutely. Yeah, building for the future. Love that. Well, up next, we're going to take you to the hills of Kenya, where reporter Dan Rainey is living the life. Herding cattle. Seemed easy. Little harder than it looks. I lost them. Like the whole herd. <laughs> Watch Dan experience a day in the life of the Maasai right after this. In a remote part of Kenya, villagers herd cattle with spears. That's for protection against lions and other wild animals. Our own Dan Rainey tried his hand at herding on a visit to see how the people called the Maasai live. Take a look. I'm Dan Rainey, reporter producer for CBN. I have a master's in anthropology and I travel the world bringing back stories of the good CBN does in people's lives. Now I want to go deeper with people to better understand their struggles as they fight to survive one day at a time. When the plane landed in my Saimara, I was greeted by the vast array of wildlife that helped make this relatively untouched part of Kenya famous. I soon arrived at a nearby Maasai village and was welcomed by the students of a school built and supported by CBN's Orphan's Promise. Village life here is peaceful. Children go to school, mothers tend to their homes, and men take the cattle to graze. That day, I met up with Ola Nasi and his family. Nice, thank you. Maasai don't have uh, shepherd's crooks, they have spears, because we have lions here. I constantly whistle, so the wild animals know I'm around. It keeps them away. Herding cattle, seemed easy. Little harder than it looks. I lost them, like the whole herd. Found him. As we were herding, Olanasi and I talked. Before CBN came here, we had to go very far to get enough water for our cattle and ourselves. I lost 50 of my cattle during the drought. I had terrible pains in my stomach because of sickness from the dirty water. At one point, I was too sick to take my cattle out, so my wife had to do it. That day, lions came and killed two of my cattle. I was afraid I would be the next victim. I climbed the tree and called for help until some men came and chased the lions away. After that, I never looked after the cattle again. Olanasi and I walked over fields and through thick brush to where they used to collect water. CBN drilled a deep well right by the old source. Now, even during drought, they have enough water for the entire village and all their cattle. So the old water source and the new water source are really side by side. Those solar panels are pumping fresh, clean water all the way up to the village. Now in the old days, they used to collect water here from this open, open spring, and they shared this with animals. So this is not water you would ever want to drink. Whenever I went for water, I was afraid lions would be there drinking. The water was very far away. We'd go through the wilderness to get there, and on the way, we'd meet with wild buffalo and elephants. Because of your help, we have many cattle again. Since the taps are so close to the village, people can now fetch water anytime they want, without fearing the wild animals. Before, we only bathed once each week. Now we can bath whenever we want. You know, I've done this water routine before, but I can see the village from here and I know this is fresh, clean water. So this is a piece of cake. 
Having water so close has changed everything. Now, even the children can fetch water. After bringing in the cattle, they showed me how they craft that elaborate jewelry. Making a big bracelet takes about two weeks. It's a Maasai tradition to dress as we do. Some like wearing more than others. You cannot wear the traditional clothing without the beads. You have to look shiny. With more time on their hands thanks to the well, the ladies make more jewelry to sell in the market, ensuring a steady flow of income for their families. We are so happy. The support we received is so important. Everyone in the village benefits from the projects. As a born-again Christian, I know that it was God who gave us the well and the school. Before the school was built, classes were held under a tree. Our books blow in the wind, and when it rained, we stayed home. We were taught about God under the tree, so we prayed and asked God for a church, a school, and water. Now all those prayers are answered. At night, when the children have gone home, the chores are done, and the cattle are resting, parents come to the school, one by one, to learn how to read and write themselves. It's something they never had the opportunity to do before. My life has changed. I can write one to a hundred. This means I can walk to the bank, write my own name and my numbers, and withdraw my money without any help. In the beginning, it was hard for me to use a pen on a book, but now it has become so easy. When my mom comes back from class, she asks me questions about the things she didn't understand. I explain things and help her. I am so proud of her. With water from the well, we also started a vegetable garden outside the village. As the women of the village tend the garden, children come from the school to learn all about agriculture. Some of the crops are used to feed the kids at school. The village gets all the rest. It's a different way of life for the Maasai, but one that was necessary for their survival. <laughs> During the famine, there was not even any milk. The cows dried up and died, and there was always sickness and death. Now everyone is healthy, and disease is a thing of the past. As the day drew to an end, the men of the village showed me how they make fire. Yeah, it's happening so fast. I thought we would be here like two hours. I see smoke already. <laughs> <laughs> then it was my turn. This is why they do it as a demonstration and don't let other people like try with them. There's a little smoke. Well, I'm getting there. Yes, it is harder than it looks. Has it been two hours yet? I'm not even anywhere close, am I? <sighs> well, we got the fire started without much help from me at all. We're getting ready to get the party started. In honor of my visit on behalf of CBN, the warriors of the village danced and sang long into the night. We roasted a goat over the open fire, and we all ate until we were full. I didn't want the night to end, but eventually it was time to sleep. I went inside, passed the goats and the chickens, and turned in. Long day, but a good day. They've got their spare room set up for me, so I think I'm going to sleep pretty hard tonight. Oh. Early the next morning, it was time to say our goodbyes. Oh, thank you, I am so happy that Dan came to visit us, and I am grateful for all that CBN has made happen in our village. God be with you wherever you go. I thank God for what he has done, and I thank him for your coming here. You have changed our lives. As I drove away, I took in the sights and sounds of Kenya one last time. I left with a sense of peace, knowing the families here have hope for a brighter future. A church, a school, clean drinking water, 
an opportunity to grow, to move forward without losing what makes the Maasai so special. What a wonderful opportunity to change, to change nations, to change families, to change people in ways that matter and that allow them dignity and also the ability to move forward with their lives. I love the fact that the parents, once the kids started coming to the school, showed up themselves at night and said, will you teach us to read and write as well? That's happening, and it's happening because of your kindness and generosity. Listen, if you haven't joined the 700 Club yet, today is a great day to do it. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month, and you can join with thousands of us who are not just out to change the world, we are changing the world with the love of Jesus Christ. And we'd love for you to join us. So will you call now? Our number's toll free. It's 1-800-700-7000. And just say, I want to join the 700 Club. We welcome you. Gordon? Well, up next, a woman witnesses a girl's initiation into voodoo. Her eyes are in the back of her head. She's totally and completely possessed by some entity. And she started, like, floating around the room. I was in shock. See what happens next. Don't go away. Marisol was fascinated by the occult, Santeria, witchcraft, and voodoo. And then one day, she witnessed an initiation ceremony that scared her out of her wits. I wanted to know what everything was all about, especially the spiritual realm. I wanted to see what they would tell me that nobody else can see. For years, Marisol Pareja consulted psychics but she wanted more than a glimpse into the future. I thought I was gonna find the truth. I was looking for a feeling and I didn't know it at that time. That feeling was love and security. Her parents split up when she was seven, leaving Marisol and her siblings to bounce between their mom and their abusive alcoholic father. I know they both loved us. It's just, we just didn't see it. I did not feel loved, I did not. What she did feel was anger. I used to take it out on other girls. I used to beat up other girls in school if they messed with me. I saw all these other kids that had families and I didn't have it, so I wanted that. She kept searching until she found a family through her best friend. They'd invite me places, they'd buy me clothes. You know, they loved on me where I wasn't getting it at home. And believe it or not, the craziest thing about that is that they were into Santeria. They were into witchcraft. It wasn't odd to me. I wasn't really scared. It wasn't the first time Marisol was exposed to the occult. Her dad had remarried, and his new wife from Ecuador called herself a witch. She would tell me she used to go to a witch doctor. He would do like cleansings on her and readings for her. Marisol didn't participate in the occult practices going on around her, but it did pique her curiosity. I just wanted an interaction. I wanted an encounter. I wanted to see something supernatural. At 18, she started her search, beginning with Catholic and Protestant churches. But since I didn't have that feeling, that encounter, I kept on looking. So she started going to palm readers, spending the next seven years seeking truth and a future filled with love and hope. They're very impressive. They really draw people in because they can tell you things. They'll tell you all good stuff. They'll tell you all the, what they see as far as positive. They'll tell you who to stay away from. But I can't recall them ever telling me anything like really bad. Then at 25, she married and later had a daughter. Now that she had the family she always wanted, she stepped away from the occult. Then after eight years, her husband left, taking the business she helped build with him. Oh, I was angry. I got ripped off big time. Greed came in and overshadowed him, and then I was left alone with my daughter in the house. Again, she sought hope from the spiritual realm, this time visiting a voodoo priest who knew the name of her psychic. I got goosebumps when he told me that. So what I was seeking, you know, this reality, this feeling, and this supernatural encounter, I found it with this man. So I asked him, how do you know that? And he said, los muertos. And I said, los muertos, the dead? I can tell that these spirits were pulling on him to tell me other things, like telling him, tell her this, tell her this. 
As she continued going back for more readings, her circumstances improved. She believed the spirits deserved the credit. I actually got a, a very well-paying job. I had a boyfriend. They brought me love and they brought me lots of money. But when her boyfriend broke up with her, Marisol's anger rose up again, sending her back to the voodoo priest. She even said she would join the order until she witnessed an initiation ceremony. This girl falls on the ground and they've got all the priests around her. And when she gets back up, she gets back up like this. Her body stands up on its own. Her eyes are in the back of her head. She's totally and completely possessed by some entity that they called up out of the ground with their drawings that they do on a floor. That's an opening to the demonic. And she started like floating around the room. I was in shock. I literally ran out of there when I saw that. At that point, I was scared. I never went back to a psychic ever. More desperate than ever, she took a suggestion from her ex-boyfriend and attended a church service. The pastor was talking about how anger can cause us to do things that are very bad in our lives that we'll regret big, big time later. I thought, oh my gosh, God knows that I'm angry. And he's sending me this message to this preacher. The encounter I was really looking for was with God. She signed up for a baptism in the ocean. And it was when she emerged from the water that she finally had a true spiritual experience. I immediately accepted Jesus at that moment. And since I needed to feel something, God gave me something to feel. It was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God filled me and I felt amazing peace. I felt this amazing energy. The anger is gone, completely gone at that point. And in its place was the love she'd always wanted. He sought me and wanted me. And so that security that he's given me, I, I didn't find anywhere else or even with my own parents or my family or my siblings or with a man, I found it, Jesus gave it to me. Today, Marisol and her daughter live in Florida, where Marisol runs her own business. She knows her search for the truth is complete only in Jesus Christ. There's no greater love for me. You can always count on God. He's so faithful. He's so amazing. You can count on Him. You can count on His faithfulness. You can count on His love. You can count that He will ac accept you just the way you are. But here's the kicker. He loves you so much, he won't leave you there. He wants you to be with him for all eternity. And so if you let him in, then wonderful changes start to happen where you are literally transformed into his image. Does he have spiritual experiences for you? Yes. Yes, he does. He can show you great and mighty things that you do not know. You can have all kinds of experiences. There's a whole variety of spiritual gifts that he wants to give to each one of his children. But the most important thing, and it is the most important thing, is him. And it's that relationship with him, that relationship that can last for all eternity. What does it take to get it? Well, number one, you have to ask for it. Number two, you have to believe. And in that belief, you find the transformation. Now, how do you believe? Well, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word. And I like to remind people, who is the Word? Well, it's Jesus. So you hear about Him, and then the Word comes to you and demonstrates to you. The New Testament talks about He manifests Himself. And the Greek behind that is literally like turns the light on. There's a, um, a, a darkness that exists, and then suddenly the light goes on, and you go, wow, I now understand. And once I was blind, but now I see. If you want this, all you have to do is ask. When you seek him with all of your heart, then you will find him. And when you find him, you have found the greatest thing you can ever have, a relationship with your Creator who loves you. If you want this, bow your head with me, pray a very simple prayer, 
and God will do all the rest. Pray with me. Jesus. That's right. Say his name. Say it out loud. Jesus. If you're there, hear my prayer. Change my heart. Come into my heart and make me new. Forgive me of the things that I've done wrong. And if you do this, Jesus, if you do this, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer and answer it today, for I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to let somebody know. When you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Luke. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. God bless you. We'll see you again.